Hello everyone. We're going to do a very special lesson today and as you can see by looking around you, you can more or less guess what we're going to try and paint. We're going to try and paint some of these beautiful parrots because we're looking at the work of Rainforest Concern which is a charity that tries to help to save the rainforest. Now why do we need to save the rainforest? Those areas in the world that have these beautiful forests are so important. One of the first things is climate change. The trees are called the lungs of the world. So the forests uh, provide oxygen from the trees. They absorb lots of greenhouse gases and they give off oxygen. So they're very, very important for that. Also, the animals and plants. Whilst rainforests cover only about 3% of the world's surface, they contain something like 50% of the animals and plants in the world. So they're very, very important for that. Also, if we look at medicines, we don't tend to think that medicines come from the rainforest, but many, many of them do. So things, simple things like aspirin, um, things that cure uh, diabetes, heart disease, um, they're trying for different cures for cancer. All of these important medicines come from the rainforest. And the last thing are the people of the rainforest who are groups of indigenous people that live in the rainforest um, and their habitat is dreadfully endangered. So we're going to try and think about helping to save the rainforest and what Rainforest Concern does, Concern does, it um, buys up hectares of land uh, and keeps that in absolute pristine conditions so that it's not used for logging and mining, agriculture like growing palm oil, um, cattle ranching. And so the world should be grateful to Rainforest Concern because they're trying to save the rainforest for the next generation, for you children really. When we look at all of the um, animals that live in the rainforest, it's amazing the diversity of them. I've been very fortunate to go to the rainforest several times in Ecuador by the Amazon um, and I've seen some of the fantastic animals that you have there. So for example, I've seen lots and lots of species of monkeys from howler monkeys, huge monkeys in the tree and you hear the sound coming through the rainforest down to little squirrel monkeys. I've seen all sorts of snakes, little snakes, huge anacondas on banks. Um, I've seen little tiny frogs that the indigenous people use uh, the poison from them for their darts to kill animals to feed on. Um, lots and lots of plants, you just can't imagine how many trees, there are huge huge trees, um, all sorts of uh, spiders, I've seen tarantulas, so we have to try and think how we can help to save the rainforest. Because the shocking statistic is that every single minute of the day, an equivalent to 40 football fields is destroyed. That's every minute of every day, the equivalent of 40 football fields is destroyed. So we are going to have a go at making a fabulous rainforest picture today. Um, I'm going to have to pause this for you for a minute and you have a look at these 
parrots because remember at any time on the video you can pause them to have a look because you might need some details when you come to draw them. Okay. So this is the picture that we're going to try and create today. And it's quite good fun. Everybody can have a go at it because basically we've been learning how to do watercolour a lot. So we're going to have a go at some of the leaves. Uh, and the parrot, I'll show you how to draw that very simply. I just want to show you very quickly some of the pictures of the Amazon rainforest that I went to see. So if I flick through, you can get an impression of the kind of thing that you might see. Plants and animals of all sorts. My grandson Noah actually saw a jaguar. I didn't see a jaguar, but how wonderful. So there are all sorts of plants and leaves, butterflies. Blue morph butterfly, it's very famous. Lots of creepy crawlies there. I saw a giant centipede. So, snakes. You get the idea, there's the little frog. Okay. The first thing I'm going to have a go at is to try and draw for the little ones so that they can have a go at it. It's a bit tricky because I've got to work from the side. But I'll try and work very quickly. I've sort of drawn it on. So I'm trying to do it very big. so that you can see. Just bring that line down. It's a very wiggly line I'm doing because the board isn't very steady and it moves all the time I'm working. So it's going to have lots of feathers like this going across here. It has a big tail. Like so. Okay. And it's going to be standing on a branch. It's got to be standing on something in a tree. And you can do all sorts. Just make up leaves. So it's surrounded by the leaves sitting in a tree. Now, lots of little ones have finger paints, so I'm going to show you how you can do the feathers with finger paints. But again, a bit tricky from where I am. But dip your finger in and you can start to make feathers. So you keep, sometimes I might do an orange one, just. And so I can build it up very quickly. I don't want to take lots of time up, but I'm just showing so parents can help with the little ones to do this, to set them up to do these lovely feathers. Now, when you want to do longer ones because there are some longer yellow ones you can dip your finger in the two colors the yellow and orange bit of orange and 
So you can see how quickly you can fill a space. When you see the parrots in the rainforest, they're very, very high up above the tree canopy. And so you have to have binoculars to see them. And these long feathers here. So you can just paint all these with your fingers. Whoops, you see, it's a wonder it doesn't fall off. Then you can do the same, the tail feathers. You can add some colours coming onto them as well. Okay, so you can see how very quickly you can start to build up a parrot. And the leaves, again, you can dip your fingers in two different colours and then you'll get lovely, lovely effects of leaves. So don't worry about it too much. Just enjoy having a splodge about. Okay, so you can see how you can build up a picture of a parrot very quickly with your fingers. Things that you're going to need. Equipment. You're going to need, I'm just going to move that out of the way. Because this is the parrot that we're going to look at. I'll stand him on there so that we can see him. I'll put this white paper behind. Okay, and we're going to draw him if we can. He's a very nice parrot. And he hasn't faded in my conservatory, so that is quite good. So that's what we're going to try and do. Okay. You're going to need your paints if you have them. It's very nice to do with paints today. You can do them with felt tip pens because the colours are bright, aren't they? So you can really have a go if you've just got felt tip pens. Your crayons, they'll come out paler uh, than the bird maybe, but if you work at it and do several layers, they should come out fine. You want some big leaves, big leaves that are a bit glossy, if I can find another one. Leaves that are a bit thicker, they're easier to work with. You need your brushes, your two water jars again, and your pencil and then you should be ready to start go and find all your equipment okay right we'll make a start if you have colored blue paper that would be very helpful because then as you're putting on your leaves the blue color will come through as the sky if you haven't, then quickly swish on. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Just a pale blue wash of a background that you can use to stick the leaves that you're going to do for the background on. So don't worry about it, just swish it on. What you do need to do is to leave that to dry. That has to be dry. It will curl a little when the paper's wet, if it's ordinary paper. So you might have to put it under some books to keep it flat. You need a few sheets of paper today 
because you are going to need probably two sheets for leaves and one for the parrot. And what I've done is to draw around the leaves like this. I'll do this one very quickly, but you'll see the others because you can make it as jaggedy edge as you want. It doesn't really matter. It's just to give you a shape. If you haven't got any leaves and you can't get into the garden, don't worry about it. Just make up leaves. Doesn't really matter. There you are. I've done that one a bit heavier for you to see. Always two water jars again. One for your uh, brush to clean and one for clean water. And always dampen your watercolours before you start. Just makes them easier to work with when you come to work with them. Now, I'm going to probably make a mess of my watercolour paints, but I can clean them afterwards because I'm using the colours straight from there. I'm not mixing them today because I want them to stay bright. So I take clean water, paint the leaf, And this is where you can have fun because you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with this. It doesn't matter what they turn out like. Um, start with some green and start to put that on. Try and get your colours, you know, quite rich. So I'm not, that's why I'm not mixing them because I'm trying to keep those very nice bright colours, bright greens and so on. So I'm putting several shades on this one and you can see it starts to blend. It does the same on uh, cartridge paper. I have tried that and I might pick up some orangey shade in the middle. Look at that. Isn't that fabulous? Now quickly while it's wet, get the other side of your brush, the pointed end the wooden end and start to put in your veins. You've got to do it while you're wet. So these leaves, although there seem to be a lot of them, you can do them very, very quickly. There's a beautiful leaf, isn't it? I'll do one more for you just to show you. Then we'll call that a day. So dampen up to the edge of your pencil line. In fact, it doesn't matter if you go over a bit this time because you're going to cut them all out, so it doesn't really matter. Right, so let's see. I'm going to put, so I'm using the colour straight from the water uh, palette, they, keeping the, the, the nice strong colours that are there. Okay, you don't want them pale you want really really rich colours wash your brush then I might get some nice lemony yellow coming in this of this one okay while it's wet quickly veins you'd never be able to paint veins on as easy as this um, because your hand wouldn't be steady enough it's a really really easy way to do it even, you know, those people who enjoy flower painting, um, if you have a look, uh, it would be difficult to do. But this, look how easy and quick it is. And look at the effect. Okay, you're going to have to do two big sheets of leaves. Lots, lots and lots of leaves there. But you can see how nice they are. Here, I've done some. I've tried with the pencil crayon. It's not always as bright, is it? I, I could work on that for a long time, but I didn't. If I kept going over and over, I would have got it brighter. That's with the felt tip pen. Again, try and get a few shades of green on your leaf. And then you maybe need a fine black pen to do your veins. You need a fine pen or a, or a heavy pencil to do that. That is done with the watercolour again um, and that's fairly straightforward as I've shown you up there. 
Right, now we're going to think about the parrot. I'll just move all these sheets of paper. I'm going to draw this one out again very quickly for the younger ones who are doing it. So, because after this, the thing I've forgotten is my glasses, but anyway, we'll manage. Now it's just that shape, look, and down to a point. That shape and down to a point. I and a little black dot in the middle. And then it's going to have feathers going down. There's basically a central line that the feathers go to like this. They're the wings folded on the back of the bird. So, so you can keep going at that and there is its tail look hanging down coming from the bottom of that point there and it's long feathers when you come to paint it. It's long feathers like that and put him on a branch. You need him on a branch for the very end. Okay, you could pause the video there and have a look how to do it if you want to draw a very, very simple parrot. That parrot is a bit like the one um, that, that I have been working on. And it's slightly more complicated. Um, you, again, need a central line when you're thinking about the feathers that you're going to put on. Because you work, I'll do it with the black pen. You work like so. You know, you, you're going to try when you make the marks to do it like this. And then the long feathers. you've got a rough idea where the feathers are and you've got this here I'm drawing it on so that you can see it but you just do it in pencil you don't see all these lines really again you're going to need a branch he needs to have a branch it's the back of him that you're looking at with his head turned sideways and his feet will be at the front, hooked onto the branch. I always start to draw a parrot with the beak. Here. You draw the beak. And then you kind of get the feel of it and the size of it. I don't spend too long because it takes, takes up too much time. But and then they have these funny markings, don't they? Um, but you can see that you can build it up like that. Now when you come to paint it, this bit of the beak actually is yellow, so I'm just going to quickly whisk that in. Ah, can you see what's happening with the black pen? It's running, but anyway, doesn't matter. Um, I know that bit was yellow, I think. It's going greeny because of the black pen. The black uh, pen, rather. Now, when you put the paint on, try, try and take it off with your finger. Whoops. And you'll start and get sort of feathery marks. You'll see it better down here. I'm not going to paint all of this because it takes so much time. Okay, so I'll just do that bit of him. Dry your finger off a bit if it gets wet. But 
can you see how you can get a nice feathery effect like that without having to try and do every single feather and then we've got these beautiful yellow ones I think the thing is not to worry too much about it we're not painting all of it, it could take too much time and they have this lovely orange bit coming down you can even do that with your fingers you can if you want to you can paint that with your fingers like with the little ones but you get the idea we better finish that it looks a bit odd having to dry my finger off each time because it's got a bit wet but you get a kind of feeling of feathers whoops that's for him he's got stuck and then you've got this beautiful blue I have a nice blue in, in this set of paints. red in the middle I'm just going to get a bit of black and just streak that down so you can see where those feathers are and you can fill those bits in with black. We need this bit of the beak very important that that is black okay we've just got this red bit here it might run that's the only thing because I'm not leaving it dry enough you you've got time you can you can leave it dry and at the very bottom there's a little bit of yellow if it blends it's it's quite nice so we've just got our parrot we've got to do is that brown we've got to do the branch we must paint the branch Okay, there's our parrot. Okay, what we did here, we cut out, I cut out lots of the leaves. So I painted, I painted lots of leaves, two pages of leaves. And where I had a space, I fitted another leaf. I could have fitted another little leaf there so I've done as many leaves as I can and I kept changing all the colours all the time so I had even some blues coming on some so I get a big range of leaves. These I've just put on with blue tack for ease because it would take too long for me to stick them on and show you but I've done mine on a black background so that it's easier for you to see. So I'll move that. Okay, so there we are. All you do is, the first thing you do, you put the leaves where you want them and you don't stick them down flat. So you stick the middle of them. So wherever you want them, you stick the middle of them. I'll take him off. Oops, it's a bit sticky. So 
you're just putting your leaves down all around him. Try and fill the outside rather than the inside and you have leaves sticking off. When I came to cut them, I didn't worry too much about it. You can get a nice wiggly edge by going like this, wiggle your brush. So you can just wiggle your brush around. Sometimes it's easier just to cut the leaf out that you want to do. That's what I find anyway. And then you're not trying to handle a great big piece of paper. And you've just got one leaf to worry about. And you wiggle your brush around. So you get a wiggly edge. It's not difficult. Doesn't really matter because all the leaves are different. So. There, so I've got that leaf cut out easily. You put all your leaves on, but I stress you're not sticking the whole leaf down. You can get some Pritt stick and just stick the middle bit down and press it down like that so that they're kind of coming off the page a little bit. The parrot is a little bit more difficult. There's my parrot. What I did, his branch, look here. I haven't stuck it down so that I could see you. He is going to go on the picture there. I've bent the ends of the branches back and I put him on so that he's a little bit three dimensional. He's standing off. You would stick them down with glue, look. You would stick the branch down with glue. But I've just done it like that. And then you've got your parrot in the rainforest. Good luck. I hope you enjoy it.